Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back again. Uh, now we're going to be talking about the volume of a sphere. Uh, this one's a little bit different than the last two we've talked about. It's actually, I think, a little bit easier because there's only one number you have to find, and that's the radius. Uh, the volume of a sphere is actually going to be this formula right here. It's going to be 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. Okay, 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. So basically all we have to do is find the radius, and then we're going to go ahead and plug in this formula and solve our problem. Now, I know a lot of us may not be used to this cubed part right here and putting that in our calculator. So I'm going to show you guys real quick how you want to do that. Basically what you're going to be looking for is the caret button, which if you look at your calculator is located right underneath the pi button. It looks like this. Okay, so when I go to plug this in, I'm going to put in my numbers. So like for this one, number one, I'll put in four. I'll put in 3.14 as an approximation for pi. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in the number three. And then that's where I'm going to hit this caret button and hit three again. So you'll see that'll give me that cubed part right there. So you'll see, I'll show you on my calculator again. I don't know how well you'll see on the screen here. Okay, but I'll put in four times 3.14 times 3 carat 3. And you guys see how that looks right there? I'll hold it right up to the screen. Uh, see how that looks? Okay, actually hit a 7. I'm going to do that. Okay, but that's it right there. So if you take a look at that, everybody see that? And again, if you're looking for where that button is, doo -doo -doo, the button is right there underneath pi, that care button. Uh, look here, right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug that in, and then again put this entire thing in, a, in parentheses when I plug it in my calculator. So put this whole thing in parentheses, and then divide it by three, and that's going to go ahead and give us the volume of the sphere. So this first one I'm doing right here, let's finish that up. So four times three point one four times three to the third divided by three, and that's going to be a hundred and thirteen feet cubed. And again, we're rounding to the closest cubic unit. So that's the closest cubic unit for us, okay? Uh, go ahead and try number two on your own. So go ahead and plug that in. Make sure you get a calculation. And then uh, on pause the video, meet back with me. We'll see if you get the same answer I have. All right, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you went ahead and tried number two on your own and got 1436 centimeters cubed. So that's going to be the volume of our sphere here. Um, so now moving on to the next problem, you're going to see something a little bit different with some of these problems. Uh, because the sphere volume is so easy, we can't leave it that easy on you guys. We've got to add a little extra challenge here, and that's going to involve us finding these spheres that are cut in half. Now, half a sphere is called a hemisphere, a word you've probably heard before when we talk about geography. We all live in the northern hemisphere. There's also a southern hemisphere. Hemisphere just means half of a sphere. So the Earth is a sphere, and half of it we call a hemisphere. And that's what we have here. Now, the same trick that's going to apply to our cylinders and our cones, we have to pay attention to with these problems, where sometimes they're going to give us the diameter as opposed to the radius. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to take this and cut it in half, 7.7, .7, and that's going to be the radius that I use for this problem. Now, they're asking me to solve in terms of pi, so I'm going to leave pi here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 4 times pi times 7.7 .7 cubed divided by 3. And I'll go ahead and calculate that. So for me, it's going to be 4 times 7.7 .7 to the third divided by 3. And I'm going to get 608.7 pi. Now, I'm not going to leave it as that answer because this would be the volume for an entire sphere. But as we see, we only have half of the sphere here. So how do I then go ahead and solve this for a hemisphere or half of a sphere? Well, if something's half the size, I divide it by 2, and that will give me the size. So I'm going to take that 608.7, divide that answer by 2, and I'm going to get that the actual volume when I cut it in half, so remember I want to divide this by 2, the actual volume I'm going to get is 304.35 pi. And that would be in centimeters cubed. Get our unit in there, okay? All right, go ahead, and you can pause the video, try number 4, and then meet back with me and see if you get the same answer I do.
All right, so welcome back into the future here. Let's look at number four then together. Uh, they gave us the radius this time instead of the diameter. That was very nice, so we can just plug that in, and we'll get 972 pi. But again, that's the volume of an entire sphere. This is a hemisphere or a sphere cut in half, so we have to divide it by two, and we get 486 pi as our answer. So the answer to what this hemisphere's volume would be would be 486 pi centimeters cubed, centimeters cubed. All right, now we go ahead and look down here. Here's a couple application problems. Again, a little bit of a combination of what we've seen before, where we're going to see uh, some combinations of the shapes together. We're going to see some stuff where it's kind of like, hey, here's some wording about what we see and what we can do. Uh, let's take a look at number five to start here. So if I notice the shape of this silo, so if you think of a silo at a farm, and we're saying, hey, I want to find what the volume of this silo is. Maybe I'm storing hay in there. You need to know how much hay I can store. Well, looking at this, I can see, well, I can see the volume of the cylinder pretty easily. I see my radius, I see my height, and I can figure out that this up here looks like a hemisphere. So I kind of can know that if I take the volume of the cylinder, so I'll draw a little cylinder here, and I add on the volume of the hemisphere, let's draw a little hemisphere, that should give me my total volume of my silo. I know those are beautiful pictures I drew there, okay? But I need to find what the volume of each of these pieces are. So let's start with the cylinder. Well, the cylinder, again, as I just said, is pretty easy to see. I see a radius of 10. I see a height of 20. So I know it's going to be, remember my formula, pi times the radius squared, in this case, 10 squared, times the height, which would be 20. So that was easy to figure out. The harder one to figure out is the hemisphere. I don't see any markings up here. How do I know what's going into this hemisphere? Well, the only number I need to figure out, if I remember, is the radius. So I need to figure out what the radius of this hemisphere is. And even though I don't see it, I need to know that the cylinder's radius is going to be the same up here. And the cylinder and the hemisphere is sharing a side. So I can kind of figure out that this radius here must be 10. It must match the one that's down there. So knowing that my radius is 10, I now know that I can use my, my formulas for a sphere, which is 4 times pi times 10 cubed over 3. But because I'm dealing with a hemisphere, I need to take that entire answer and calculate it and then divide it by 2 to make sure that I actually get the volume of the hemisphere, which would be the sphere cut in half. Now I'll go ahead and calculate each of these and add them together, and that will give me the entire volume of the silo. Go ahead on your own, multiply these in your calculator, use 3.14 for pi, tell me what answers you get, and then add them together and give me the whole silo. I'll pause the video, and then when you come back, we'll have the answer. All right, so hopefully you went ahead and calculated and you got 8,373.33 or a third, pretty much is what we got. Um, and that's, I put U cubed to show units cubed. They don't actually tell us a unit for this. Whatever units it is, it's units cubed for that. Okay, so that would be the volume of the entire silo. And you can see how we can find volumes of some shapes that aren't just our, our generic 3D shapes that we talk about, uh, but we can find them, the combinations of them by knowing the individual formulas and using those, okay? Let's do one more uh, application problem and then you guys can move on to uh, some practice on this. I'll move my video out of the way here. Uh, but we have Owen has a set of 10 marbles. Now each marble has a radius of one seat centimeter what is the volume of a glass used to create all 10 marbles so let's say that i'm a marble manufacturer uh manufacturer and i'm making these marbles for owen and i'm saying hey i need to uh, make these 10 marbles and i need to know how much glass how much material i need to make these and that's something that you know a lot of businesses do all the time they don't want to order excess materials they want to make sure they have exactly what they need in order to fulfill their demand so I'm trying to make these 10 marbles, and in order to figure out how much material I need, I need to know the total volume of all the marbles. And if you think about a marble, what shape is it? Well, it's a sphere, so we're going to be using our sphere formula. So in this case, we're going to be going ahead and doing uh, our 4 times 3.14 for pi. And in this case, we have 1 centimeter size marble, so it's going to be times 1 cubed divided by 3. So I'll go ahead and calculate that, and then it'll tell me what the volume of one of these marbles is. So we'll go ahead and do that. So I have my calculator right here if you want to calculate along with me. So we have 4 times 3.14 times 1 cubed. Now, 
I could put one cube to my calculator, but one cube is just one, so I can actually save some time, just write times one, divide by three, and I'm gonna get four point one eight and six repeating. Now, that's all well and dandy, and it's really nice to know that. The only thing is that I don't need glass for one marble, I need it for 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this answer, I'm gonna multiply it by 10 to show me how much I need for all 10 marbles. And when I do that, I'm gonna get 41, 0.86, which let's go ahead and let's round that to about 42 centimeters cubed. Okay, so I need about 42 cubic centimeters in order to have enough material for these marbles. So that's some applications with spheres. I uh, hope you guys uh, got that out of there. Basically, you just need to know the formula, just like the other volumes of sheets we've been talking about. In this case, for 4 thirds pi r cubed or 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. Thank you very much.